All right, now I want to get up with my get up in what my friend has to present. He took some pictures of the cigarettes for the uh, fire safety compliance shit. They call them speed bumps. Let me read this here. Photos are of a normal non-FSC cigarette and an FSC. Under normal lighting conditions, the difference is unremarkable. Both look nearly identical aside from the printed logo on the FSC. It seems as though the ink is bled or did not adhere to properly to the trigger paper. Under short and long wave UV light, you can clearly see distinctive darker bands. One at or near the tip, one in the center, and a small portion near the filter, but most likely the smaller brand is the same length as the other brands. Usually the rolling paper is adhered inside the filter. So you got some speed bumps at the very end too. Natural American Spirit brand just recently began incorporating the FSC papers in their cigarettes or at least began releasing them to the public in Nevada about two and one half weeks ago, it was a couple months ago, maybe a month and a half. Depending on the retail store in which you purchased a pack, some were FSC and some were not. I noticed that they would go out on occasion Occasionally, and some would taste strange. Also, if ashes dropped off the tip, they would actually burn me. I have been smoking this brand loyally for many, many years, and it quite irks me that the specific company continues to state that they offer an organically natural product. Maybe it's just me, but I think that they should either stop using the ethylene vinyl acetate treated paper or just remove the word natural from the company's identity and marketing strategy altogether. Just be going for all of these motherfuckers to be doing that too. Alright, a week ago they were all FSCs, a month or so. Unfortunately I remembered a small smoke shop. Fortunately I remembered a small smoke shop smoke shop that mistakenly purchased many cartons of soft packs. To my luck they did. Huge difference in the taste, and my mental state afterward was not so clouded. The main reason why I smoke NAS natural what is it natural American spirit and pay the extra two bucks a pack was because the major brands of cigarettes began to make me sick after I smoked natural American spirits for a month or so straight I could taste the chemically altered tobacco after that paradigm shift I never looked back and only purchased the natural American spirit it is outrageous that this chemical substance which has not been tested at least on record by the direct inhalation of the particulate matter and fumes caused by the excessive heat the most interesting revelation is that it has been vigorously tested in a myriad of applications and uses. After researching these has led me to sense a darker and sinister conspiracy. A dark and sinister conspiracy. Its desired intention or nature is probably not in our best interest. In my opinion this whole FSC thing is highly questionable and morally objectionable. Dig around. It doesn't take long. Acetic acid ethylene ester, polymer with ethane. Acetic acid ethanol ester, ethanol ester, polymer with ethane. Now here's some here's some links I'm gonna post. Hopefully uh you check into those. All right, I want to get it, get up into what Jeremy Narvi's book and the and the resources has to say about tobacco, nicotine, and poison. Now this is going to be part of the FSC code piece we're going to do here, breaking down the polyvir acetate bullshit fire safety code of the cigarettes. Let's we'll start right here, page 198 in the notes. The nicotiana or rustica species used by shamans contain, contain up to 18% nicotine. This is Wilbur in 1987. Whereas the Virginia type tobacco leaves contain from 0.5 to 1% nicotine in Europe and occasionally reach 2% in the United States. According to the Center of Tobacco Research, Payerne, Switzerland, Personal Communication, 1995. Some forms of contemporary Amazonian shamanism use cigarettes, as in the case I described in Chapter 3. However, the influence of the use of not adulterated product on the efficacy, efficacy <laughs> of the cure has not yet been studied. Moreover, according to the Edict on Foodstuffs published by the Federal Chancellery of Switzerland in 91, producers are allowed 
to add a series of substances to tobacco that will not exceed 25% of the final dry product for cigarettes, cigars, and similar smoking articles, and 30% for cutting or rolled tobacco. This is page 196 of the Edict on Foodstuffs. These additives are divided into five categories, including moistening agents, preservatives, and flavor enhancers. The fourth category reads as follows. D products for ash bleaching and combustion accelerators, aluminum hydroxide, aluminum oxide, aluminum and silicum heteroxides, aluminum sulfate, alu, silicic acid, talc, titanium dioxide, magnesium oxide, potassium nitrate, carbonic acetate or acetic, malic, citric, tartaric, lactic, and formic acids, and their components of potassium, sodium, calcium, and magnesium, as well as ammonium. Potassium, calcium, magnesium, and sodium phosphates, the fifth category reads, adhesives, the jelly and thickening, agent, thickening agents of the edict of the 31st of October, 79, are additives as well as pure black collodion, cellulose, ethyl cellulose, acetyl cellulose, hydroxy ethyl cellulose, hydroxy propyl, hydroxy propyl methyl cellulose, hydroxy ethyl methyl cellulose, polyvinyl acetate, there we are right there, that's the new FSC shit, been around since 79 at least, polyvinyl acetate and glyoxol. Unfortunately, it is not possible to obtain the cigarette manufacturers the precise list of additives for each brand, given that the recipes for this food stuff are jealously guarded. Now here, let's get into the part six. Cigarettes emit 4,000 toxic substances according to the Switzerland's Federal Office of Public Health in 1994. Claussen and Wong in 93 write in their article on radiation in the Encyclopedia Britannica, the largest non-occupational radiation sources are tobacco smoke for smokers and indoor radon gas for the non-smoking population. It's the volume 25 by Martel in 82 writes in the letter published in the New England Journal of Medicine, Indoor radon decay products that pass from room air through burning cigarettes in the mainstream smoke are present in large, insoluble smoke particles that are selectively deposited at bifurcations. Thus the smoker receives alpha radiation at bronchial bifurcations from three sources. From indoor radon progeny inhaled between cigarettes, from polonium-214 in mainstream smoke particles, and from polonium 210 that grows into lead 210 and rich particles that persist at bifurcations. I estimate that the cumulative alpha dose at the bifurcations of smokers who die of lung cancer is about 80 rad, 1600 REM, REM, a dose sufficient to induce to induce malignant transformation by alpha interactions with basal cells. This is page 310 by Evans in 93, writes in an article entitled Cigarette Smoke Equals Radiation Hazard. In one year, a smoker of one to two packs per day will irradiate portions of his or her bronchial epithelium with about eight to nine rem. This dose can be contrasted with that from a standard chest x-ray film of about 0.03 rem. Thus, the average smoker observes the equivalent of the dosages from 250 to 300 chest x-ray films per year. Strangely enough, the radioactivity of cigarette smoke is rarely mentioned in the majority of the articles dealing with the toxicity of this product. Abilene in 93, who provides a list of the different forms of cancer provoked by cigarettes, also notes that low tar cigarettes have a lower risk than normal cigarettes. However, up until now, a lowering of the risk of heart attacks or chronic lung disease among smokers of light cigarettes has not been noticed. 